welcome to Collider TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is our weekly show where we break down the latest in all things television news, plus talk about the week that was in TV. Joining me this afternoon, I almost said this morning, this afternoon, it's your favorite, Josh McCuga. Am I your favorite? Wow. Oh, man. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Collider TV Talk. We're going to crush it today. So many good stories. We got People vs. O.J. Simpson. So many Game of Thrones things. We got the Preacher clip that aired last night. A lot of superhero stuff. Um, I'm just really pumped to be here. Joined by two of my favorite people as well. Sinead, who are they? Awesome. It's Sasha Pearl Raver. Uh, I'm going to fight you for favorites because Makuga, but also, I mean, the bearded himself. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure where I stand on this show. I feel like I'm kind of relegated to the end there. I don't know. I don't, I don't really feel a lot of love. I don't know what's going on Dude, right are now. are you kidding me? No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Man. It's all up here. It's all up. It's all up. <laughs> what do we got first, Sinead? Awesome. The finale of The People vs. O.J. Simpson American Crime Story aired this past Monday. And yes, like in life, O.J. got off. With the success of the true crime genre in series like this, it's not shocking that networks are looking to strike while the iron is hot with CBS purchasing the John Benet Ramsey story. Josh, what did you think of the finale and are you excited about the influx of real life crime dramas? Yeah, I loved this series. I, I've always been so intrigued by this whole thing. I think anybody that's around my age knows where they were when they were watching the White Bronco on the 405, and they, they watched a lot of the trial. I just remember the trial being so long. I remember the trial. Uh, we had TVs. I think I was in seventh or eighth grade. I can't remember which year, but TVs in, in our school school classroom and they stopped all of the classes and everybody watched the verdict of the of the OJ Simpson trial and you know uh, it's such a polarizing trial but probably the most famous trial in the history of the United States especially in the time that it was and the way they had access to everything and court TV and, and this was kind of like the modern incantation of where we went with television but also the kind of cool thing about it and how they did it in this was a lot of times they do those cheesy reenactments. And this, I thought it was going to be parts where like there was cheesy reenactments, like Eric walked into the house and it's like a thing, and he's like, and he had the knife, and like, but it wasn't like that. Some some amazing casting, Courtney B. Vance, ridiculous, Sarah Paulson, unbelievable. But I, you know, I love serial. Any of these true crimes where I don't know much about it, like making a murder, keep bringing them on. I'm psyched. David, what do you think? I'm down for it. I'm really curious to see what's going to happen next year because it's a, it's American crime story, colon, yeah. we're getting um, uh, the hurricane, uh, Katrina. Yeah. We're getting Katrina, which should be probably a devastating story. I don't think, I bet ratings-wise it's not going to do as well just because it's, I don't know. I mean, we had the Kardashians in here and we had, you know, a lot of... Uh, I don't know, just a lot of um, foreshadowing for what was going to happen later on in life with the celebrity, you know, craze and everything like that. You know, uh, Inquirer, I think, got big back then during the OJ trial, got really big. So I don't know what Katrina's going to bring, but I think it's still going to be good. I trust Ryan Murphy. I'm excited to see him. CBS worries me. I'm just not a big fan of the way CBS does their shows. I, I like Big Bang Theories, okay, uh, but I'm just a little worried about they do their, their procedurals. I'm not really sure how I feel about them doing the John Bonet Rams. I hope it's good, though. I hope well, it's good. actually, speaking of their procedurals, mm -hmm. you guys, spoiler. NCIS, they solved it again. Wait, this week. Well, we got to say something. Crazy. Yeah, CB, CSI Cyber, though, they solved it too. Oh my God, you which guys. Which is crazy. They David, solved it. No, David, I know you watch SVU. Did they, Did solve, they solve it? it? Is that the one with uh, Ice T? I don't know, but I Which think they he, solved he's it, been, He's been yeah. working for like 14 years now yeah. on that show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing about CBS, <laughs> and the thing that I think you're bringing up by mentioning them is, this is an FX show. This right. is a Ryan Murphy show. I mean, David, you are the you were the person who should have said this. Katrina, do, do we care about black people? The ratings will prove mm. whether or not that happens. I think that he is such a talent. I cannot wait to see what he does. But we've seen true life stories forever. If you have ever tuned into the Hallmark Channel or the Lifetime mm -hmm. Channel, you have seen bad versions of this. What made this show so incredible i have to sing the praises of sterling k brown like we're all talking about courtney b vance he was awesome and sarah paulson but the guy who played durden what uh, oh darden. my god christopher darden he didn't have the sexy role and he, he nailed it no. nailed it yeah. but this show it was so perfect in every way the moment where sarah paulson said do i need to take off my watch my jewelry at the very last episode when she was like willing to be held in contempt chills over my entire body yeah. but do i trust cbs no way, not nearly as much, it, it, but I still think it would be interesting. I want to give credit because a lot of, I know a lot of, you know, uh, Collider video community has been saying, like, you know, you guys don't talk enough about network television. And to be fair, CBS is the most watched network. So they're not listening to me. They're doing, they're <laughs> making so much money. They don't care what, you know, David Griffin has to say. But 
they, they do have a formula and it does work. Yeah. And they get a lot of people to watch their shows. I mean, Big Bang Theory has been the number one comedy for a long time, does very well ratings wise. Something that they're doing is working. So this John Benet Ramsey thing could be could work in their favor. Well, and bring I, in more ratings, you know, and you know, I spawn more American crime shows. But maybe a question to the panel is what would you like to see if mm. there was a trial? If there was something that we haven't seen or like something. Dude, Phil Spector. Phil see, Spector would have been b bonkers. I, the Phil Spector story is something that, yes, it's good. I, there's so many intricacies that we I would like to see on these crime stories. That well, they did. They did the Pacino over. bad version of yeah. like the movie. But I'm saying, like, just show us the trial. Oh, yeah. Because that would have been really fascinating. Mm -hmm. And if you guys really want to see how OJ ended up getting, <gasps> I mean, the civil trial tapes on A&E, go and watch them. OJ is so guilty. And he's such an asshat in these <laughs> interviews. And they're like, so OJ, uh, did you know you were wearing these shoes? He's like, I don't own those shoes. They show him a picture in the shoes. He's like, whoa, whoa. I mean, probably had the shoes. I'm just like, it's, awful. it's awful. But uh, I think that this show proved, because like you said, we've seen uh, this formula so many times. This show proved that we can get perfect television out of something like this. And they even mentioned one of the trials I would like to see in this show, the Menendez brothers. Mm -hmm. Show us something like that. Show, I know Ooh. that Margot Robbie- Shapiro. Shapiro was on that case. Yeah, yeah. Shapiro yeah. as well. Good. Bring back Travolta as Shapiro. I know everybody hated him, but I think it's hysterical. Uh, Sinead, what do we got next? Spoiler warning. Uh, that's a huge spoiler warning. This week, Game of Thrones released an extremely verbose synopsis of the first episode that reads, Jon Snow is dead. Daenerys meets a strong man. Cersei sees her daughter again. Then we got an exclusive extended clip from the first trailer when Liam Cunningham, who plays Davos Seaworth, appeared on Conan. The entire cast made it to LA last night for the season six premiere. And then this morning, a brand new trailer was released. Sasha, with all of the Game of Thrones action this week, are we in for an action-packed premiere episode? If I could rip my clothes off right now and <laughs> run around this table screaming, I absolutely would. Do Are it. you guys kidding me? <laughs> that trailer was insane. I watched it like seven times. We've got a new Red Witch. There's a new crazy, like, oh God, like there's a new Melisandre who's coming to town. I watched the, the, the White Walker so many times because I was like, is Jon Snow a White Walker? Snow White Walkers. There's going to be a new dragon rider and it's motherfucking Tyrion. This shit's gonna be crazy. Crazy! I can't even, you guys. I can't even. It's gonna be so, so, so good. <laughs> you literally, you literally, I swear, <laughs> get me excited for it. Yeah. Like, have you watched this trailer? I have not. I, if you, I don't know if you, you we didn't cut to the wide shot, but I had to hold Sasha's microphone because it was about to fall <laughs> off the table. She's about to like eat it. <laughs> yeah. You have no idea, you guys. For a more, oh my uh, God. for a more, um, I don't know, low key synopsis. <laughs> David, thoughts on the trailer? I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> so good. I think we should go to the next top. No, no, I, I, I can't oh follow God. that. Um, it, it was, it was, it was excellent. I yeah. mean, I, I'm not maybe rating quite as much as Sasha, but it was. She's right. It nailed it. I, I know you talked about last week the love for Liam Cunningham. We're getting a lot of Davos this year. Yes, and that's great because Davos is fantastic. Uh, he's one of those underrated characters, kind of a quiet character, but they're bringing him out more. I think Melisandre is going to change. You know, we see in the trailer before this one, she's like, all the visions I had, nothing's coming true. She's she's going to be lost this season. She's going to have to find herself again. I don't think she's going to be the kind of, you know, sinister woman that we've seen in the burning people all the time. I think right. she's going to change. Something's going to change in her. And just, I mean, Tyrion delivering awesome lines yeah. all the time. It's like, that's what I do. I drink and I know things. Drops. I mean, and then in the dragons at the end, it was so good. There was so much good stuff in this trailer. I'm pretty sure I said that in college one time. <laughs> I, I drink and I know things. <laughs> I drink and I know things. <laughs> I'm that, sure you well, that. Tyrion now. actually knows things. We, we know. think we know things yeah. when we drink, but I think Tyrion does. Yeah, yeah Tyrion actually does. Uh, I, I, I mean, obviously, watched this trailer ten times. Uh, I, if I could take my clothes off with Sasha, this would just be an awkward, awkward episode of TV talk. <laughs> David's just in the background, I'm like, do I? Who's gonna go ahead and just slide away? <laughs> she, she needs, she needs, like, I am not paid enough. To get <laughs> but, um, but the 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 trailer got me. Like, I didn't need to be more excited about it. Now I'm 30 times as excited. And I think Dennis, uh, we talked before this, Dennis and I said the same thing. I thought that Daenerys wasn't getting naked anymore, and then they show her having her clothes ripped up, so we could get more nudity, guys. I'm just Body saying, double. If, this, if this season couldn't get any better, then they show us things like this. The thing that got me most excited was how big that dragon is oh, now. Oh, yeah. That dragon is huge. And 
there's three of them. I mean, this. I, I well, the production values is going to be through the roof this season. Yeah. The most expensive season. I think there was a good interview. I think it was uh, Entertainment Weekly. Or it was the premiere was last night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the premiere, the fans were out. They got to see the episode, and everybody it seems they loved it. They said this first. This isn't a spoiler. But they said this episode is not going to be a setup episode. The first mm-hmm. one. It's going to get the ball rolling. There's going to yes. be a lot of things going on. It's not going to be one of those things where we just see where everybody is, kind of get everything nice and you know it's, yeah. it's going to be intense. Uh, also too. Uh, ben FNY said like they shot like in five different countries. Yeah. They had three or four different crews going on at the same time. They were in like Iceland and, and Ireland and you know, I mean they were everywhere. So it, I mean, it's gonna be on a scale like we have not seen yet. There are so many things that I am so excited for. First of all, I've been re-watching the show from the beginning because my mm-hmm. husband didn't see it the first time around and he came in on like season three or four. I have said from the start, and especially re-watching it, Sansa that bitch you need to watch out for because mm-hmm. the truth is is I think she's the one who's gunning for the throne because she was the one who wanted it initially. She's turning dark this season. She's getting very intense and what's going Character on with Arya awesome. Arya Stark, that plot line, like she goes full Jackie Chan Ninja. In- Ninja! That nice little kick, uh, jump oh, up yeah. there. Like, oh. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> We're finally, it's, there are so many things that I can't even begin but I have this hope and again, huge spoilers here. Jon Snow we know, yeah, he's dead. He's coming back. Mm-hmm. Tyrion, is taming a dragon, we're gonna see the Khaleesi, Tyrion, and Jon Snow riding the three dragons. That is my prediction by the end of season six. You guys can also see that in an Alice Cooper concert in 1981. <laughs> um, I think it's happening. Well, it's crazy it's, too. It's we, we always talk about episode length and how long should shows be. You know, networks tend to go 22, 23 episodes, like with Flash and Arrow and you know The Good Wife and all those kind of shows. But typically with HBO, they go short. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna 13. contain all of this ten. Oh, this is 10. It's, 10. it's always yeah. 10. Every year is 10 oh, with really? Game of Thrones. It's crazy. Yeah. They contain I, I all I that madness in 10, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> which is funny. Sometimes last last season, people were like, oh, the season's kind of slow. I'm like, slow? You're only getting 10 episodes of this, and it's gone. Yeah. I mean, you really got to just kind of savor it and enjoy it. I mean, there's so much they pack into these hour episodes. I think as a group that uh, we should get together, dress up, and watch the premiere together. Or I not dress, right according there. to this group. This might be a oh, yeah. uh, nude slumber party. I'll you know shave what I'm a dragon into my chest. <laughs> no, mercy. Mercy. Uh, so many thoughts, so many thoughts. With Preacher about to air on AMC, Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg have teamed up again to bring a cult-beloved ultra-violent comic book series to life on TV. This time, Cinemax will be landing will be the landing spot for The Boys. Supernatural creator Eric Kripke will develop writer Garth Ennis and illustrator Derek Robertson cult classic about former CIA special ops who hunt, track, and regulate the not-so-noble superheroes and vigilantes that inhabit the planet. The adaptation will come from Rogan and Goldberg's Point Grey, Neil Moritz's original film, and Sony TV. Sasha, are Rogan and Goldberg changing what's possible on TV? Well, I have to give huge props to our man, The Beard, David, for loaning me the Preacher comic this week, mm-hmm. which I enjoyed so tremendously. And reading it, it got me really excited for this news because to know what we know from the people who have seen that first episode and that it is true to what they lay out in that graphic novel. This is going to be so effing violent, which is rad, and it's gonna be dark and twisted, and I feel like with this show, because we already know Cinemax goes gritty, they get really violent, Mm -hmm. they show you all kinds of nudity, so to take this comic, which I'm hoping you will loan me too, it could get so, so wild, and I feel like Evan Goldberg and Seth Rogen are these incredible comic minds and they understand what audiences want and they're delivering that and they're working with networks like AMC and Cinemax that can help them do it and help actually create that vision. And if they're sticking true to the source material, I think it's gonna be rad. David, you've actually read these. Yeah, no, it's a good choice. Garth Ennis is a, I guess like a better word, he's, he's visceral writer. I mean, he's his imagery. If you want to get a good book, read The Punisher. Uh, Garth Ennis has a great run on Punisher Max, stark, violent, and it goes way darker than even the uh, uh, TV series did with The Punisher. It's just fantastic. He's a great writer, great visionary. I'm glad that his stuff, he's not as infamous as Alan Moore or Stan Lee or, you know, um, uh, Neil Gaiman. He's not quite that big, but I mean, if you're a comic book reader, you know who Garth Ennis is and you respect him every time he writes something. So I think this is going to be awesome. Don't sleep on cinema. People be sleep. People just think it's Skinamax. You got the soft core porn. <laughs> <laughs> it comes on early too, boy. In the West Coast, stuff comes on at nine o'clock. Not that I know that, but uh, <laughs> it comes on early. But, um, you know, you, you have shows like The Nick. You have shows like Banshee, you know, all these fantastic series that are pulpy and they're just over the top. And it's basically, it's HBO. Yeah, it's it the is. same company. Yeah. I mean, it is HBO. It's HBO. People call it HBO Lite, but it's getting on part of the Nick. If the, the Nick was on HBO, it oh, would win a ton of awards. Yeah. But because it's on Cinemax, I think it gets overlooked. But anyway, I think the boys, I'm excited for it. And because of Seth, uh, 
uh, Rogan and Evan Goldberg. I think it's going to be great. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff I like. I like the anti-hero stuff a lot. I'm like, I'm like, you know, Jimmy in Goodfellas. I root for the bad guys to win. <laughs> I've always, I always want the bad guys to win. Uh, and I, it's something like this, where they're bashing superheroes' heads in that are getting too cocky. These are the guys that that have that have the balls to get it mm -hmm. all done. And that clip that they showed us for Preacher last night during Fear yeah. the Walking Dead was awesome. And that's that's like raid material kind of stuff in a moving car. <laughs> Just forget about it. So if they're gonna bring. Uh, we talked about it last week ad nauseum. Banshee is the kind of show that you people need to be people need to be watching. More people mm. need to be watching. It is so violent, so dark. Uh, just I feel like if Arrow was rated R, it could be Banshee. Absolutely. Yeah. And you you get you're going to give me the boys that is going to be on Cinemax and they can do as much violence and nudity and insanity that they want. Sign me up. Because <laughs> that's one thing. Rogan and Goldberg have never shied away no. from going way over the line no. as far as comedy. Give them action and blood and source material. Forget about it. Mm -hmm. Sinead, <laughs> what's next? It's official. Benedict Cumberbatch no longer needs sleep, breaks, or apparently a life off screen. <laughs> Direct from principal photography of Doctor Strange, Cumberbatch will jump directly into Sherlock season four for BBC One and eventually Netflix. It's been two years since season three left us with some pretty juicy cliffhangers, but the entire team behind the series are back. Sherlock co-creators Stephen Moffat and Mark Gaddis released a statement which ended with the line, this is the story we've been telling since the beginning, a story about to reach its climax. Josh, will the long hiatus hurt the series? Are we in for more genius? You know, I was a kind of a late uh, attendee to the Shirley, the Sherlock party. The Shirley, Shirley party. Shirley party. Oh, Shirley. Shirley. Um, I, 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 I've never been the, the biggest Cumberbatch fan until I watched Sherlock and I was on board with him. And then I, the show, I've never, again, I've never been like a huge Sherlock Holmes fan, mm -hmm. I guess. And I'd never really liked the Robert Downey Jr. ones, but I can watch these, this show over and over again. It is so fun. It's so well done. It's one of the first shows that did text messaging correctly. And like the, the hints in text messaging, it's really cool how they do text messaging well in this show. And it's like sexy, like for some reason you hate Benedict Cumberbatch, but you're like, oh, I wouldn't mind if my sister dated him. Like it would, it's that kind of thing. And it the, it, the mysteries that it brings is totally different than any, any other crime TV that we see. And they, and it's like, like Scooby-Doo, right? Where it's like, oh, it's so-and-so at the end. You have no idea who the guy is at the end. It's awesome. It's just super fun. <laughs> I love that you're looking at me for our, for Cumberbatch approval. Oh yeah, we've all had right. this has been my week of Cumberbatch, but I will say after shitting all over CBS, Elementary. I've heard it's good. Not a bad show. I've heard it's good. Yeah, yeah. another Sherlock series. <laughs> another yes. Sherlock show. But also, we always give so much credit to Cumberbatch because he's Doctor Strange and yeah. he's Sherlock and he was spoiler Khan yeah. and Sergeant into Darkness <laughs> and <laughs> spoiler. Uh, but uh, he's just one of those actors who's just good in everything that he does. He brings it. Twelve Years a Slave. Yeah. He was fantastic in that. I mean, he's always good. And also, let's let's not forget Martin Freeman. Yeah. Let's I not forget Martin about uh, Bilbo. Yeah. He is Bilbo the most, Baggins. He's one of the most underrated actors. Yeah, around. and in Fargo, season one of Fargo. Oh, it's funny. I, now, oh. correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it was the Emmys. They both won an Emmy in the same year. I believe Benedict won for Sherlock in miniseries. And then Martin Freeman won for Fargo in the same Thank year. Right. They are yeah, both... Yeah great and they both deserve praise i know cumberbatch gets a lot more because he's i guess a little more popular but they're yeah. both great and and fargo mm -hmm. that if fargo you back, yeah you have two seasons yeah watch now, fargo please watch fargo which oh, i have to man. say season two is actually better than season one in my it is. opinion and not yeah. by Such much an and they're both not by much, yeah. absolutely genius yeah. to be uh Sinead, do you watch sherlock i don't oh man do you watch fargo no Sinead. are you worried the love for cumberbatch though he has like his whole yeah. like the women what they call I was, themselves like i was reading through the notes i was reading through the notes last night talking about sherlock and um, I, I got hated on a little bit for not having seen it yet by my friends. But they said that it's a show that you can kind of get into even if mm -hmm. I'm a little late in the game because yeah. every season's got a whole other new plot. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, they sold it to me. They they were like It's only three fans. episodes. It's great. You can, it's well, like an hour and a half each. Yeah, yeah, it's like three little movies. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it's absolutely fantastic. Awesome. All right, we're going to go into the superhero rundown here, guys, on Collider TV Talk. Again, hashtag a Collider TV Talk if you guys want to ask us questions throughout the week. We're usually very vigilant uh, in the comments and on Twitter, Facebook, wherever. Uh, ask us questions. We love to answer. Uh, I know everybody out there is a superhero fan, so what do we have first? Sinead. Okay, so another spoiler alert, but this week on Arrow, Laurel Lance, played by Katie Cassidy, was killed and answered 
answered the season long question of who is in the grave. The fan reaction was mixed with many people thinking it was smoke and mirrors and the death was a fake. Multiple reports from producers and writers have said that Laurel is in fact dead. It was also reported that Katie Cassidy will appear on The Flash and Vixen, but in different times and earths. David, did you think the Laurel death was a good payoff for fans and are you sold on what's next? Didn't I call this on the Arrow After Show? Wasn't that my prediction, I believe? We did our prediction. We so did. I You actually, and I, Jason Inman both picked Laurel Lance. Laurel, yeah, because yeah. I wanted Nissa to come in and kind of be a full-time mm-hmm. role. Okay, so let's get back to Katie Cassidy. I feel like the writers just didn't know what to do with her character. For me, after... It was during season two. Was that when she was going to AA meetings and all yeah. that? I yeah. feel like once that started happening, and then she eventually replaces Sarah as Black Canary and gets her little scream thing she's got going on. and go, Wah! And then all the glass breaks and everything. Sorry, that's a, I know it's a horrible impersonation. Horrible impersonation. I have nothing against Katie Cassidy. I just feel like they just didn't know what to do with her character. I feel like she was just kind of lost. And they. I feel like that's, that happens. They just had to kill her. I don't think they had anything else to do with it. And that's too bad because I think she could have been used better. But she just, she, it was just too late. By the time she got to where she was, I just don't think she was likable anymore. This is interesting because I feel like the reaction <clears throat> hasn't been that mixed. It's kind of been like, oh, thank God she's dead. I yeah. hate her. I hope she actually is dead. Which I think is interesting because it's not personal. It no. is the character and it was the way she was written. And I just feel like you're absolutely right. They didn't know what to do with her. And they made her just kind of dead weight. Mm-hmm. The, the problem, too, is that when it, the series started, she was Oliver's love interest. Right? She in was, the comics too. That's correct. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. And she she had sex appeal and she was part, you know, she was dangerous. Well, not dangerous. She was more of the enemy because she was the ADA and she didn't know about the vigilante. And that, that season one of Arrow is so good. And then you lost that sex appeal with Laurel Lance. Because I had a little crush on her season one, not gonna lie. I know a lot of people didn't per se love her character or whatnot. John Campia being a number one of that person. <laughs> uh, fans talk about it all the time. And as the show went on, I started to bl- be more and more in Campia's camp. I don't know how many times I can say I like camp that. in there. I like that. That's um, good. That's good. But sh- they lost her. They really yeah. did. And they lost her for the fans and they lost the storyline and they lost a really good character by f- like pigeonholing her and like forcing her into this Black Canary role, which is like I went to one Zumba class and now I'm a ninja, <laughs> which basically like that's how they got. Laurel yeah, because because Katie Lutz is just so great as I mean now she's the White Canary. She's on Legends of Tomorrow, but she's she was just so good as Black Canary. Yeah. And I think when they got they you know I guess they killed her and then she became the White Canary. It's just people. I think people were angry. People yeah. wanted her back. I, I wish I wish she, Katie Cassidy could still be wrong. Because actually I think she's good. I, I used to watch Gossip Girl. I know about yeah. her. From she that. was hey, awful. Hey, come on, on now. Girl. Come no, on she now. She was awful on Gossip Girl. That is so she was not true. terrible yeah, on Gossip Girl. True. But I really have to say, are you telling me that me and Sinead are not ninjas because we went to like a Zumba class? <laughs> I do Pilates every week. Oh my god, you oh, guys! Okay. I like she can crime fight. She can do crime yeah. fight. <laughs> I, I can see crime fighter on you, Sinead. Right? Yeah. Sasha, on the other hand. Hey. She takes off her clothes and just runs around. Talking about Game of Thrones. That's your superpower. (laughs) Yeah, that's my superpower. (laughs) Sinead, what do we have next? All right, another spoiler alert. A lot of spoilers oh on today. Well, yeah. Spoiler Listen, edition guys, episode of TV no Talk. You guys keep one. begging us to talk about stuff, and we got to talk about People are just it. watching the entire show on mute. Yeah. Well, it's because, you know, <laughs> CSI Cyber, they just they yeah. do it every time. I know, I know. This week on NCIS Las Vegas, they solved it. I don't even think that show exists. Oh, you know, we're, we're going to have to do, to begin, we're going to have to do like an NCIS theme show at some point. Yeah. Yeah. You know what show I actually really enjoy? And again, whoa, CBS. Hawaii Five-0. It's like a mini trip to Hawaii All once right, a week. All right, Sinead, what do we got All right. So, yeah, spoiler alert. Marvel, Mar- Marvel's, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., like most Marvel properties, has been the benchmark for superhero TV lately. The fans of TV Talk have been asking us to discuss Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and we listened. So if you're caught up on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., then you can stay listening. But if you're not, you just might want to wait until you see the sidebar change. I'm here, guys. You guys have been begging us. We were on the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. after show. Agents of after S.H.I.E.L.D. is after S.H.I.E.L.D. is gone. <laughs> uh, so, listen, we talked about it before. This show started weak. I don't think it, like, season one it wasn't the greatest. It's better? It's better. This show is getting awesome. It is dark. It is violent. It's it's what it's what network TV could have botched. It really could have botched it. And now it's sitting here. You don't watch it. Uh, I it lost me in the first season. Really? Mm-hmm. Same here. Same yeah. here. I watched the whole first season, yeah. but then I, I got out of it. Same here. Yeah. You but guys are please, killing why don't you right discuss it? <laughs> yeah, this is the Josh McGoogan show. Come on, Josh, break it down. What's going on? Like, gonna, like, Spoil, like, Spoil away. Spoil away. Just a little baseline. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you. 
they finally brought back Ward as this super villain, right? And Ward is by far the coolest guy on television. I'm sorry, he's just awesome. What? He what Hold on. Is, not maybe not on television per se, right. but on, on ABC. On ABC, he's cool. definitely the coolest guy. Right. He outside of a Shonda Rhimes show, say. he is the coolest guy. <laughs> outside of SVU TV, no. <laughs> He, he, they bring him back as this ultra villain now. He's sort of like a, what I guess Apocalypse would be like. I don't know. Apocalypse kind of just looks That's like cool. a, And he, they bring him back from this planet of Hydra. And now he's owning it. And all of these Inhumans, which are going to transition into the Marvel, the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they're all like prepping these things. And it's the, oh, it's the only show that really takes their cinematic universe and really implants it into the show, which I think is so well done because the Marvel movies are perfect for a lot of fans because they get, I mean, the Captain America Civil War is gonna destroy anything that Batman v Superman did, at least in the first weekend. And uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is hitting on a lot of those things. I mean, Coulson was in the movies for Christ's sake and now mm -hmm. he's sitting on a TV show. No, uh, like DC won't even touch the cinematic universe and the TV universe. They've created this, uh, this beautiful TV universe that won't even transition to the movies. And I think that's a short for the fan. And mm -hmm. that's what Marvel isn't doing with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That's my take on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Maybe not that many spoilers, but you guys are welcome. What's, what's, what's up, Sinead? I'm the only one that watches. <laughs> We're like, yeah. Apparently, I thought David was going to chime in. In that beard of gloriousness, we do not have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but... I, I, I can't. I can't do everything. You know, I can only do so much here. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's too much of me. He's the overachiever. You know, yeah, he is. this he poor is. guy was sitting up late watching Fear the Walking Dead, right. letting his beard glow. It's hard. He doesn't have <laughs> much time. He's only one man. He's, He's only, only one, one man. man. Uh, Shame on Freeform, formerly ABC Family, has placed a straight-to-series order for Marvel's Cloak and Dagger. This superhero love story is based on the comic book duo of teenagers Tandy Bowen, who can emit light daggers, and Tyrone Johnson, who has the ability to engulf others in darkness. Cloak and Dagger is targeted towards young adults or the 14 to 34 Becomers demo. Sasha, is this a show you're going to watch? You know, any show that's got a dude named Tyrone on, I'm, I'm into it. <laughs> um, again, this is one of those things where I was like, David, cover all the comic. <laughs> cover all the comic, David. I have. I don't have Cloak and Dagger individual issues, but he they were teaming up with Miles Morales, who is the oh, yeah. uh, half black, half Hispanic Spider-Man. Yeah. Oh. And now he, because of what has happened now with the new Marvel transition, now he is in the 616 universe with Peter Parker and all those guys. So, I mean, they, they were teaming up for a while. I don't know if they still are. I haven't read an issue in a little while but no i mean I'm, I'm pretty excited about this can we talk about becomers mm -hmm. i'm 31 so is that like i'm a becomer you're, you're a becomer. i'm still becoming so yeah. I'm, I'm i'm in the same demographic as 14 year olds yeah no, i still have like, time this is it's great like as millennials grow up it's like following the growth of millennials like as as what are considered millennials that's how my parents said i'm a becomer yeah becomers. Yeah. it's like the next stage <laughs> i've well, already became Oh, buddy. No. Well, here's the thing about Freeform, though, because they're really trying to rebrand and they're really mm -hmm. trying to make ABC Family something that's new and hip. And Pretty Little Liars was like a huge step forward for them and sort of played into that whole Gossip Girl thing, but even in a darker way. Mm -hmm. I think that if they do this right and if they follow what we were talking about with the Seth Rogen lead, if they can really push the envelope, this show could be really cool and could be something that brings crossover fans for them. Well, oh, Sinead, you're, yeah. you're on the Pretty Little Liars after show. You know the show. You know a lot of what's going on in Freeform kind of a thing mm -hmm. this is themed seemed like the kind of show that they would make dark and for the marvel fans and for something like this would would freeform i guess by calling it freeform now they have the option of going that way yeah absolutely um actually mova and i actually have a show on freeform and we just started shooting it and it was kind of like we started our contracts with abc family mm -hmm. and now we're on freeform and it there's a definite effort by the network to reach a broader audience and the idea of dropping family was was huge for them because they wanted they wanted to push the envelope and they are doing so like the new season of pretty little liars is darker and a little bit more sexual and you see butt cheeks, and Whoa. that's a huge step for ABC. Butt wait, wait, not, not butt. You mean like 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 the whole butt, or like the like the like top part, like the like, crack? She's wearing like a cheeky a cheeky thong, you know. Mm. But Ooh. I mean, like Give that's not some... something that you would expect from a network like ABC yeah. Family. Correct. And now this whole idea of rebranding, reaching the becomer audience, um, this I think Cloak and Dagger could be the show to get mm. that achieved. You put, I agree the, with you, you put the marble on it too, and I mean the promo shots. I said it in the pre-production meeting. You guys all laughed at me. I was like, girls, 
dagger's busty. She's got a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of two. Uh, they, they, they don't draw them small in the comic book. Yeah, they either bigger, sure. you know. And don't. so I'm like, I'm, I'm psyched for the live action. Put this one on Cinemax. <laughs> oh. uh, what's next, Sinead? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just, I, mean, I, I, I think the, I think the audience is really getting an idea of what we like to watch yeah, on TV. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you know me, it's, that's the stuff I like. Violence and Boobs. Yeah. I'm boobs, a man. Boobs, violence, and Game of Thrones. <laughs> and that's all in one. Yeah. Uh, all right. Now we're going into highlights and lowlights, guys. These are the highlights of the week and the lowlights of the week from he, us here at uh, Collider TV Talk. Again, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. I'm going to go my highlight of the week, uh, Rhea Seahorn. She plays Kim Wexler on Better Call Saul, and she is fan friggin' tastic. If you guys watch that show, I think she deserves at least an Emmy nomination, if not an mm -hmm. Emmy win. Uh, I think... There's one thing about this sh th these shows, right? Like Breaking Bad, like Better Call Saul. They, they cast real people. Yeah. Like Kim Wexler, she looks like what a lawyer would look like in New Mexico. She's got amazing sex appeal, but also the kind of like, woman that would walk into a boardroom and you would listen to. Mm. Do, you, do you watch Better Call Saul? Oh, yeah. yeah. What no, do you think? I, I don't have that sex appeal thing that you're talking about, okay. but I think she's phenomenal. But... Yeah, I mean, I'm with it. I have to say, for me, one of the highlights has to be something that I found out on this show as soon as I walked away. Yeah. I talked smack about how Melissa McCarthy wasn't going to be on the Gilmore Girls revival, yeah. and I got like 12 tweets. They just announced it. They j She's coming back, y'all. Yeah. That's very exciting. That's boss, if you will. That's that, boss. Oh, oh it's it, guys. Puns, good one. Guys. Good one. It's for the day. <laughs> Another thing that I was so excited about this week was that Bloodline <laughs> season two trailer. Ugh. Did Dude. you guys watch this? David, did you see this thing? Uh, I haven't seen season one, so I don't want to. Oh, wanna... you didn't watch the season two yeah. trailer? Wow. Spoiler alert, guys. This trailer, first of all, go out and watch season one. It is a really, you love it, man. I, I should say I have seen the first episode. I'm sorry, okay. I've seen the first episode. You it. love drama stuff. This I do is, love drama. This is a little, it's it's a little soapy. A little slow. A little soapy at points. Yeah. Oh, it's slow television. Yeah. But it's a slow burn. And it's it's once it's you get so past episode five, I feel like it just okay. goes. And two words, man, Ben Mendelsohn. Yeah, yeah. he has a cigarette hanging out of his mouth the whole show, and it's just awesome. Uh, David, what about what? Give me a highlight. For I want to talk about Ray Donovan season four. Yeah. Yeah. I like Ray Donovan. I mean, when it first started, people were like, what is this show? I said, well, it's kind of like the male version of Scandal. He's yeah. a fixer, yeah. but he's a fixer in Hollywood as opposed to a fixer like Kerry Washington in Washington, D.C. So I, I love it. I mean, it go it goes dark. You know, I mean, these guys, these, these are men with issues. They're complicated. Yeah. They have affairs, you know, all this. Some of the best acting on Right. On I mean, TV, it'd probably yeah. be the worst life you could, you know, live doing that. It'd probably destroy you. I mean, I don't want to live that way, but I like, it's like escapism for me. I like and watching And their marriage it. is so, so <clears throat> twisted oh, broken it's awful. And, and, and I, phenomenal. I forget her name. I always remember her from Deadwood. Uh, she she was in the Sons of Anarchy. And I always forget her. Irish yeah. actress. I the always want to say it's Amy yeah, Ryan, wife. but it's not Amy it's Ryan. Not Amy Ryan. No, she's but so she, good. She, she's very Somebody good. Somebody Google it. You guys are computers Sinead, out. look it up. Uh, Ray Donovan, his wife. Oh, she's a, um, she's amazing. Yeah, she's she's absolutely fantastic. That show, again, one of those shows. If you want, oh, John Boyd. I'm sorry, I've got to say, John Boyd is over off totally the charts. Paula totally. Malcolmson. Paula oh, Malcolmson. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, she and she, they give her amazing storylines too. And mm -hmm. in a show like that that is so male dominated, you might not get that female storyline. And she's sometimes you don't get it. But that's why because it's a female creator. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, she's, she's one out. Of, Amber, she's one yeah, of, like, the she's rare gone. Yeah. Yeah. Female creators for a show like that. Right. Yeah. Period. And it, female creator just. It looks like Hollywood. he's reached a point in the trailer where he. He can't go darker anymore. He has to either, he's either going to die or he has to rebound. He's losing his family. Everything's falling apart. He has to find a way to come back from that. He's so just good. guns in every yeah. scene, mm -hmm. too. It's a, it's, there are points uh, in it where the only parts in it that annoy me are, is when he's able to get from Woodland Hills to downtown LA in 15 <laughs> There's never minutes. any traffic. And if you're it's watching shows, you've never been to LA. Don't yeah. believe these people how they drive. You cannot get to, to these places. Every episode yeah. of 24, I'm like, he went from Valencia to Hollywood in 10 minutes. Impossible. Yeah. You can't even do that. that <laughs> <happen>. <laughs> no. no. Uh, All right. Maybe my my final highlight of the week, guys. Conan in Korea is, yeah, that was is funny. absolutely hysterical. He's he's such an underrated talk show host, uh, and he does he goes outside the box. A lot of these guys don't do the on the road kind of stuff that often. Conan in Korea, check it out. Uh, let's go into some low lights. Now, this would have been a highlight for me, but because I actually really like the premiere of Fear of the Walking Dead. Mm. Yeah. I didn't watch it. I, I have better things to do with my time. Get so, out of here. David, come so on. So I, I get up this morning and I said, all right, I got to watch Fear the Walking Dead. After I've seen the excellent vinyl episode from the night before, <laughs> which I know Sasha agrees with me on. She loves the we'll show. Get, it's her we'll favorite get to it. show. We'll get to it. I promise. Um, so I watched Fear the Walking Dead. And I said, Josh, I'm like, Josh, I'm kind of bored right now. You're like, what? It's, it got spoiler. I guess we're going to. I'm not going to spoil There's boats. There's yeah. zombies. There's they boats got zombies, zombies in the water. 
And yeah. that, that's just bad. Josh is like, I'm in. That I'm sold in. him. He's done. Sell me on water zombies? I just don't think I really, I just don't. Wow. I watched the first season. I didn't hate it. I just don't think I care about any of the characters. I just don't care about their, I, I, I should say there's some great actors in there. Yeah. You know, some great performances, but I just don't, I don't feel connected. And it's not as, even though we, we kind of destroyed the Walking Dead finale, yeah. I'm still more curious to check out the Walking Dead finale or the premiere next season than I am to continue with this show. I think I might be done. I, I, I the this, this <clears throat> shot, I mean, that got me was when they are they're pulling out of the boat. It's at the beginning of the episode, and LA is just on fire, like yeah. it's being bombed by planes and stuff. It, it, it's you I care think, about them on a boat. I do. I kind of care about because I want to see like what's going to happen on a boat. What do you? Where do you go from the boat? Where does this take you? Where do you end up? Because you can't stay on the boat the whole season. Well, I, got, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I Give just me I feel light. like well for me, let me just say Speed Two. It's really hard to have action on a boat. Cruise control. Cruise Guys. control. Titanic. Uh, Titanic. You gotta have a love that's story. True. That's you gotta true. have Leo. Need Leo. If Leo was in the show, I'd watch the show. For me, low light, we got to go back to vinyl, man. Oh. And more importantly, the fact that Terrence Winter, Left. who it was the showrunner and one of the great writers, I mean, we're talking Boardwalk Empire here, people. He is leaving the show. He will no longer be involved. Because of creative differences. Creative differences AKA. being the, the show kind of sucks. He's and like, get again, me the hell out of here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I I watched last night's episode. And Why are you still watching the show if you don't like it? Because if I'm going to talk smack about something, I want to know what I'm talking smack I about. That. And I this that. show <laughs> is ridiculous. Although I will say, I do appreciate full frontal male nudity and there was a moment of that which I, I like equal opportunity so wait, full getting, frontal nudity I'm getting clowned on for love and full frontal no, no, female no, nudity no 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 I'm not, I'm not looking at it like give me that random penis I'm looking at it like <laughs> girls are constantly called on constantly to show <laughs> all aspect of their body and men very infrequently are so I just want equal opportunity objectification okay mm. I'm all for equal opportunity of whatever you said okay <laughs> but <laughs> what, what I'm saying <laughs> I'm not saying like oh show me more dagger boobs what i'm saying is like she seemed really busty that seemed like a kind of crazy for a because like you, what they've done with a lot of the female superheroes is they don't like sh they, if you go and look at the picture of dagger it's like a woman in a negligee with just like you know, and it's just <laughs> these giant boobs it's hard to look away hell in half the articles i read they're calling a titular uh, comic book series. I believe that's titular. Whatever, titular. <laughs> I see T I T. Tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> but yeah, he's leaving the show, which I think this could go one it's of a two travesty. ways. travesty. This could either make the show even, if possible, worse. worse. <laughs> which, oh God, dear God. Or maybe it'll actually get interesting. And I think, too, uh, that Bobby Cannavale was on Fallon and he, he was asking about vinyl and Bobby Cannavale was like, yeah, it's good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, so he doesn't like the show either. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I will say, if one more person does coke on that show and they go, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, yeah. That's not how you do drugs. No. Oh, please. Uh, I, how, I, I, I've never done coke before. So I'm if you watch <laughs> any other movie ever, uh -uh. no man or woman that has done cocaine has gone. <laughs> I say we bring, we, we don't even bring you cocaine. We're going to bring you pixie sticks. Just pixie sticks. And David's going to snort a pixie stick on the show. Yeah. And we're all going to see you do it like Bobby Cannavale. And then we'll see you do it like a normal human yeah. being. Even on Flow, when they were doing pure oh, Colombian please. flake with Paul Rubens. Nope. Who was, it still looked less still comedic. Looking, yeah. And also that stupid three-way. What's with the stupid three-way? With Ray The Romano? one character that I, no, 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 with uh, the one character I actually liked. Spoiler, Gino Temple has a three-way. Uh. She's the one character I actually like kind of find interesting on the show. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just her curly bangs, but oh my God, why stupid three win and she's in the arms of the other guy? I hate I like how our low lights, we're, we were supposed to be brief, but we just crushed next. you on vinyl again. I know this is two weeks in a row, vinyl's <laughs> getting crushed, two weeks. Yeah. I think we're gonna give vinyl a break next week. Thank you. I will say one of my low lights, uh, and Sinead watched the finale, American Idol just, the last five or six years just dying a slow death until they were like, I think we're gonna take it off TV. And people were like, <laughs> it was still on. <laughs> I get like who won this year I, th when they showed Trent like, Harmon won this year which was a huge upset because everybody thought LaPortia Renee was going to win because she had a much better story and honestly I thought she was going to win I called them as the final two but he had mono going into the whole season and it was kind of amazing and then they the went to the hometowns the and it right really was the is moment this. It is Sasha Pearl Raver going into American Idol I think that but uh, the finale was garbage every single time they brought somebody out for like a big showstopper I was like who are you season I seven? liked the finale they had they had to do some Something different because for all the finales of each season I haven't watched it in like four years but all the finales of each season would just be like random musical guests that sure is cool but this time they I mean it's 15 years of a show so they had to bring out 
everyone over the past 15 years and that was kind of the best part of watching it was like where the hell have you been <laughs> and like Hicks. checking them on instagram <laughs> and like seeing like just like Again, where these people are low light of like um, well, two, three seasons of american idol we got american idols and then after that we just got a bunch of dudes with guitars but i will say the worst part of it was the very very end where uh ryan seacrest was like oh this is so hard goodbye and then it fades to black and he goes for now. I know. And I was like, oh, you guys, yeah. come on. Not Give me best. that tease. We don't want you Perfect anymore. Hanger. Perfect low light. <laughs> and, and like goodbye for now, meaning tomorrow morning when you listen to me on the radio and then you see me on <laughs> nine other shows. Thank you, Ryan Seacrest. All right. We're going to go into a pilot review. Uh, this week, we are talking about the girlfriend experience. It is on stars. It, you can watch all 13 episodes right now. But mm. again, like we talked about when we talked about the path, uh, we're just doing the pilot of The Girlfriend Experience. Steven Soderbergh directed, well, produced, sorry. Um, it has a great Soderbergh feel to it. Totally. I, I'm gonna, my, just, my initial reaction, I was bored. <gasps> I was bored by it. Whoa. Um, I thought uh, it was average, to be honest with you. Interesting. I don't mind Riley Kehoe, who is Elvis Presley's granddaughter mm -hmm. and Lisa Marie Presley's daughter. Uh, I thought she was a pretty decent actor. I just thought that the actual material around it was very on the nose and kind of average. David? David. I, I, was, I was hooked. Really? I loved it. Yeah, mm. I thought it was great. Not just because of the uh, obvious, you know, we have <laughs> going on there. I think what's interesting about the show is when you watch this, you think girlfriend experience. If you saw Steven Soderbergh's film uh, several years ago with Sasha Gray, where it's like, oh, Sasha Gray's in this because she's a porn star, so that's what made the movie important. You watch it, and it's not really that sexy. I mean, there's scenes, there's nudity, everything you would expect to see in a premium uh, cable show, but it's pretty dark, actually. It shows you just how... Just matter of fact, this is. I mean, she's she's just, she's a law student. This girl named Christine. She's a law student. She's trying to pay her bills. She needs some money. She's very attractive. She's very confident when she's in this situation. But I mean, she is giving guys girlfriend experiences, which is really weird. It's not just simple prostitution where you go, boop, you know, yada yada yada, and you get out. I mean, they go on dates and they talk, and it, it's it, it's crazy. I mean, it's it's depressing too. I mean, it really shows you how kind of just low this life is. And I don't, I think it's. It has a point to make. It's not just, yeah. I get it's bland. Some of the conversations are a little bit dry. There's not a lot of music. Just kind of gets right into it. But I, I don't know. There's something about this that's captivating to me. I don't know, Sasha, maybe you can explain it better. There's something that draws me well, into this. Well, I, uh, I actually thought that it perfectly captured a better version of the movie. I will say the movie, mm. weirdest junket experience I've ever had in my life. Lots of dudes in sweatpants. Because they invited a bunch of porn sites to cover the movie. It was very weird. But when you watch the movie and then you watch the show, there is a similar tone to it. It. there's a similar look to it mm -hmm. I actually was almost wondering if Soderbergh had shot it but I think that she's an excellent actress I think the first episode because they showed then a trailer for what's gonna happen this season and I think what happens this season is enticing and explosive and really fascinating and I wanted more episodes but within the first I episode I think they just didn't fully deliver mm -hmm. for a pilot again yeah th this is a pilot review so I think this is a perfect binge show Oh yeah, right. Like, cause it's I'm, I'm, it's I'm, only thirty minutes too. Yeah. It's just thirty minutes, which is great. I mean, I'm I'm not saying that I'm not going to watch the rest of the show because I will. There's something like sexy and very mysterious to me about the escort thing because when you live in major cities and you've, I mean, I've worked in bars on and off for you know like seven or eight years and like high end hotels in New York and L A. You see this happen yeah. on a regular basis. And for a kid from Pittsburgh who really didn't see that, I mean, I grew up in the suburbs of Pittsburgh. I didn't we didn't like have like hookers just hanging around our Applebee's. So. <laughs> Um, you, you might got, have, you don't know. You do, yeah, but in these high, so like this whole lifestyle is something that is very relevant, very mm -hmm. current, something like an Ashley Madison or something like that. Um, Sinead, what did you think? Um, I definitely thought it was pretty slow and the last 10 minutes of the episode was better than the first 20. I do love that it's 30 minutes because it's kind of like a quick watch and I kind of enjoy that. Um, the the very last scene, without giving it away, but the very last scene was enough for me to want to watch mm -hmm. the second episode. Okay. Yeah. So um, but I do, I, I agree. It was kind of boring a little yeah. bit, but I mean, look at what happened with the path. Like I was like, eh, this is kind of slow and I am hooked yeah. on the path. See? I find this world much more interesting than the world of the path mm. because I well, think it's more like realistic too. Yeah. And also I love stars is one of those channels where I feel like you can start going now for really incredible, strong, even if it's maybe twisted female characters yeah. and also whoever cast this show 
loves, like me, some House of Cards. Yep. Because we've got Tom, the writer from House of Cards, and we've got the random lesbian girlfriend of the hooker mm -hmm. from season two of House of Cards or season three of House of Cards. And loves HBO casting because a lot of people from Boardwalk Empire. Oh, yeah. That that. Guy, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Homegirl from 24 is in there. Yeah. And yeah. I thought that Riley Kehoe was really talented. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she has this sort of glassy blankness. I was going to say, like yeah. a deadpan look to her face. Yeah. Well, Sasha Gray was just like, I oh. literally don't know what I'm doing. Well, she actually seems like disassociated in like a cool sort of sociopathic way. Yeah. Well, I think in Sasha Gray's case, when you were in the movie, she was like in a scene and she's like, okay, so do we have sex now? <laughs> like, I think she was just confused by the fact that she wasn't having sex <laughs> on camera. So true. Sorry, that was just... That's true. terrible. No, it's totally true. Watch the movie and it's, <laughs> it's apparent. Like, there's one scene where they literally had to like hide a camera behind a couch so she wouldn't totally know when it was rolling uh, yeah. so that she wouldn't be too uncomfortable in the scene. Yeah. I will say one thing, I said this to you before uh, pre-production, is that one thing Soderbergh does, whether he's producing, however, he takes room tone of the sh and like just the basic sound that you hear wherever you are the cafeteria that's what i meant there's no it's not stylized no which it's some star just, shows are that's yeah. slice of life and it's a dark life but it it's very it's it's sexy well that's yeah. the thing like because you watch a show like if you've ever seen i don't know spartacus talk about stylized yeah. i mean yeah. those scenes are just ridiculous i mean slow punning camera slow motion all this but with 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 this show it's just kind of just shows the act yeah. and then moves on yeah that's totally. it yeah. Yeah. yeah i'm in i want to watch the rest yeah, of the I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah i'm in listen yeah. i thought it was slow i didn't like it, per se love it mm -hmm. but i'm definitely going to watch it all david probably already watched the whole yeah that's oh, so no, true. No, I, I, I just actually. watched the pilot because we were only talking about the pilot today i did not right. so on season six episode four uh <laughs> yeah. okay uh we're gonna go into some twitter questions guys if you want to send in your twitter questions again hashtag at collider tv talk we co correlate collate them collate them all week long i we have a little document so i think that's the word there it is collate I don't Co know. Collate? Collate. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, what it's you know. collate papers. Mm -hmm. You yeah, can yeah. Co coordinate. You can. Yes, Sinead. All right, I fine. Fine. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. Send it in. We love all your questions. If we happen to answer it on Twitter, then we probably won't talk about it on the show. But, uh, you know, bring, them, bring, the, bring the heat, if you will. Bring the questions. Sinead, what's our first one? At Stephen Malovsky tweets, in your opinion, what popular TV show has overstayed its relevance? I'll say it right now, and I will get destroyed. Freaking Big Bang Theory. Done. It's over. It's show stupid. Relevance, though? Relevance. How is that not relevant? It's just, it's, who cares? <laughs> a lot of people care, Josh. You were right. You're 100% going to get destroyed. <laughs> the show is good. It does good. It still makes people laugh. Why does that mean it's yeah, not so Are you not defending a, Big Bang Theory? I mean, I I think I, think not, I'm not like a, like, I don't look forward to watching it every night. Like, but I've seen plenty of episodes. I don't even know if there's new episodes right now. That's how much I'm not invested, but I will still stand by it. So again, so overstate it. its relevance. No, but I will still stand by it. Like it's still doing its job. Interesting. I would say, okay, I mean, it's Sinead. new, that's but I defense. still... That's, that's a great defense. That's a great defense. Let's yeah. just move on from that. Let's yeah, move on. Job, Next Sinead. question, because they, he'll get Twitter hate and you'll get Twitter love. This is well, perfect. It's always, Keep going. Sinead gets all the Twitter love. She's pretty. She's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. No, what do you guys think? Overstated relevance. Uh, well, I was going to say The Ranch, I think, even though it's brand new, it's oh. so irrelevant. It's like a multi-cam sitcom, yeah. but it's also like kind of a dirty drama. It's just like, get, get out of here. I will say, maybe in my defense of Big Bang Theory is, I just think that the three camera sitcom with a laugh track is dead and i think that show might be better served to go single camera or something like that no mm. way because it's one of the last greats yeah that's exactly the thing like you've got mom you've got big bang and that's pretty that's much pretty much it. it i don't and i think like that so this we're show, keeping it around like for relevance of three common no i mean saying like the ratings would 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 um prove you wrong it's huge ratings yeah, yeah huge. Right. like you know if, if it wasn't relevant people wouldn't watch it. That's like saying we don't need radio anymore. Right. You have to keep certain radio. genres that's, that's around. That's why people watch certain TV shows and especially sitcoms is because of its relevance. Like not, you know, that's like, it's not just about it being an incredible show. People like relating to sitcoms because it's like you're easy at the end of a long day, you turn on a sitcom. So if the ratings are there, then I still obviously think that it must be Look relevant. at Sinead DeFrancis. No, oh, no oh, she, I got one. Yeah. I got one. I got one. Keeping up with the Kardashians has overstayed its relevance. Yes, I would love it you. if that died a very quick death. David, what do you, um, think? you know, I'm going to go with the show I love because I like to eat, obviously, and I love uh, watching shows about eating. I wonder if Top Chef has run its course. Yeah, I kind of. How many think good so, chefs too. are there really? <laughs> this really season left? was crazy good. This was a really competitive I show. Feel like, well, I feel like season six with the Voltaggio brothers was the last, mm -hmm. like, superb season. 
Ta- I know I mean, we're critiquing never... like cooking shows. I mean, come on, but I mean, I, I like Top Chef. MC Hammer was on this season, though. MC Hammer was on. I don't show. know. No, no, no he was judging a challenge in Oakland. Whoop whoop, Oakland. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shane, what's next? <laughs> um, at I want to say Kulik M. Layden. I'm sorry. What are your thoughts on television making a prequel, sequel, or remake TV series based on a certain movie? Yeah, I love. When I think like recently, a lot of t- there's been some great TV shows that there was a movie first. I've said this, I said it on TV fights a while back. I would love to see a Phantom series. The Phantom is like one of my with favorites. Billy Zane, the Billy Zane movie, yeah, but a, like an updated series, not obviously not with Billy Zane, but uh, an updated series of the Phantom. I think the Phantom can be done well if somebody comes in with the right vision and takes certain parts of certain comics and makes that a series. I would love to see the Phantom. Billy Zane's a boss, man. He is a like boss. he still looks good. That dude, there's this. If you ever watch Mad Dogs on Amazon, there's a scene where he's in the club. Everybody's doing this crazy dancing. Billy Zane's in the middle of the club, just kind of like. Bobbing his head like he's got like one move. That's all he needs because he's Billy Zane. I would watch that show. I actually interviewed him for Playboy last year, and you nice guy. He's lovely right. and spent most of the time pitching me a sequel to The Phantom, which I actually think would be pretty <laughs> awesome. Good. The Phantom's oh, it's good. Totally awesome. No, it's he good. has a great idea. It's still online. Go to Playboy.com and Google Billy Zane, and yeah. you'll see the interview and you will see his pitch. Um, I personally hate the idea of movies being turned into things that the movies weren't supposed to be. Let the movie live as it is. Mm. I feel like it has failed repeatedly. Like about a boy that was a terrible show it was not a great movie either but it was a really good book uh i don't need to see like a a tv version of like the fact that they're doing a dirty dancing tv movie makes me want to burn everything to the ground i think it's hideous and despicable and katie seagal who i loved why the fuck are you in there Uh, the whole thing just makes me kind of sick no let things be what they are and be original let it be original why does everything have to have ip well, because I think people just get so excited about certain franchises or certain movies, and that's like the next step. They're like, "Oh, I just want more of this." But you're what right; about, it does. What about I get a it Days within of a franchise. Thunder series, but like some NASCAR. We haven't seen a NASCAR TV series ever. We only saw one Dale Earnhardt movie, Dale Earnhardt Jr. movie uh, about his dad, about the Intimidator. Um, you could do a Days of Thunder. NASCAR yeah, series and, on and, HBO. And, and you bring Tom and Ken. They got some kids, and the yeah. kids going to be racers. Cole Trickles. And yeah. Kids, Cole Trickle Jr. I would Woo-hoo. watch that show. Now bad. we're talking. Days David. of Thunder. I mean, that, there's that, remember that scene, Days of Thunder, where he's like playing like with the sugar packets on her leg? Yeah, yeah. That's that's some, that's some steamy right there. That's good stuff. That is uh, the precursor stuff. to that amazing uh, Animal Cracker scene in Armageddon, where. Oh. Yeah, oh. so pretty much the same scene. Yeah. Ooh, Armageddon, okay. the TV series? I don't want to miss a thing of that one. No. See what I did there, guys? Yes. That's You're just, welcome. Oh, wow. Sinead, what do we got next? At Casey Lee Clark tweets, what is your favorite TV cast of all time? Seinfeld. Ooh. 100% Seinfeld. I mean, you guys know what I'm going to say. Yeah, of course. What is it? Friends. Oh, She's friends. Yeah. Oh, friends, yeah. Yeah. David? Oh, David? I mean, there's a lot. I mean, you got to give respect to The Wire. Oh, oh yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. I mean, cause just because everybody's good. People that shouldn't be good actors, that aren't even actors to begin with that are in that, are still good. I thought it was really cool. Like, I started drinking Jameson because of McNulty. I was like, <laughs> I'm switching from Jack to Jameson. That's it. <laughs> Can I have a comedy and a drama? Sure. Comedy, I'm going to go in Living Color. Oh, wow. Mm. And then drama, I'm going to go with Game of Thrones. Game of okay. Threesies. That's, I mean, that's. Oh, counts. I would say comedy for me would be uh, Parks and Rec, especially. Oh, is yeah. it season two when Rob Lowe yeah. and Adam Scott come on? When they yeah. come on, season two, that's a great cast. Yeah. And Chris Pratt, of course. Go with him. I mean, the, the. Sopranos created, like, there yeah. was no. They never. Not many of those people outside of Carmela and Tony have really done much. I mean, there's like, obviously... Michael and Perry always done okay. Yeah. Perry, yeah. yeah. But they're like, you know, all those Italian actors, they came together and they were kind of like guys that have always been mobsters and certain things and became lovable cult icons. Yeah. Sopranos, I mean... I gotta throw Lost in too. I love mm. Lost so much and I miss that show so much. And I also feel like the boys from Entourage don't get as much love sometimes as I they should. I was terrified somebody was gonna say that. I really, that's I a really show that do. stayed on too long, but they, you're right, yeah, they had great but chemistry. Like, they had great really, chemistry. like, if you yeah. think of like a TV cast, um, the best part about that show mm. was just how well the, that core group of guys, like, had that chemistry. Yeah, it gave it gave guys like me like the hope that they should move to LA and be an actor and think it was gonna work. Because <laughs> that's out. what everybody's Whoa. life is like in LA. Oh <laughs> oh, All yeah. right, Sinead, uh, one more. <laughs> All right, Stephen Malofsky. Oh, he made it again. Yeah. All what right. supporting character in a TV or movie deserves its own spin-off series? Ooh. I'm gonna go somebody from Big Bang Theory to redeem <laughs> myself. Oh boy. No. Uh, I think that Man, I want to like go with maybe a superhero route, but let me think on it. David, what do you think? 
I'm going to go with Gus Fring from uh, French. I almost said French from Breaking Bad. Ooh. Mm. Giancarlo Esposito is one of my favorite villains of all time on you know on any television series. He was so good. I want to see you know Los Pollos Hermano. I want to see how that that started. <laughs> I want I want to see his. I want to see more of his origin story. Maybe we'll get some more of that in uh, Better Call Saul. But that still won't be like his true origin story. I'd oh, love to see more of that. This is my. I said it last week. Give Negan a spinoff series and an origin story oh. to how Negan mm. started on Walking Dead. He was the best part of this season, and it was twenty. I mean, it was sixteen episodes, and he was only in it for seven minutes. He was the best part of the season. Give the guy an origin story: how he formed the group, how he became a mob boss, basically in post-apocalyptic world. <laughs> it's awesome. Wait, Sasha. Sinead, you gotta go. I'm still, I'm still racking my brain. I have, I have no I'm idea. How about like, a, is there a Pretty Little Liars character that deserves a spinoff? <laughs> pretty Little Liar. <laughs> um. No, they tried to spin off of that show and it didn't too, do too well. What was the spin off show? It was called Ravenswood. Oh. Um. Yeah, spin offs don't always do well, but I mean, we have some good ones and we have Legends of Tomorrow was doing yeah. really well. That's a great show. Well, remember, like, like right after the. the um, Better Call Saul, of course. The, mm -hmm. the oh, Battle Call Saul. Uh, right after Seinfeld, they tried a Kramer show. It failed. <laughs> right after Cheers, they tried a. George Went show, Norm, mm -hmm. but that failed. Obviously, Frasier worked really, really well. Well, after I mean, there was Joey. 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 The thing yeah. with the sitcom thing is like, that's. <laughs> Why people love shows like Seinfeld Friends is like the cast. Yeah. It's the cast. It's everyone that's involved. And then you give them, like, Joey was the You worst. can only capture the magic. Oh, it was you know? awful. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. so depressing. Absolutely. I mean, if there had to be a CSI TV talk, I would watch it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, Gary Sinise is going to get nine more spinoffs of SVU. Totally. SVU 2. We, like, owe it to the fans at this point to, like, talk a little <laughs> bit about CSI at some point. We're going to have to watch one. In order, I'll watch. I'll talk but about But again, we talked about why, why CBS and those networks are so huge. They provide comfort and they CBS provide cares, rely. It's like McDonald's. If you go to McDonald's in New York, that Big Mac should taste the same as it does out in LA. It should. It doesn't always, but it should. And that's what those shows do. They offer comfort. It's also really easy to be the most watched network when you have NFL football every Sunday. That's true. That yeah, you have that. The football. Yeah. All right. Uh, finally, we're going to go to the pick of the week. David Griffin, you are going to jam us up with a pick of the week. Here we go. So we're going to talk about vinyl. No, I'm just joking. No more vinyl. I already heard my spiel. We're going to talk about Outlander season two premiere. I'm not going to give any spoilers from season one, so don't worry about that. All I want to say is check out Stars. Check out Outlander season two. Uh, Stars just came out with a app, you know, just like kind of like HBO Now, where you can pay. I believe it's nine dollars a month. You can go in the Google Store, iTunes Store, so you can stream all the great shows like Black Sales. But I'm here to talk to you about Outlander season two. It's a story of a woman in love, and you know, the benefit of her is that she has two men in her life. Uh, not a big spoiler because it's on the cover and it's been on the trailers, but there's time travel. Ooh. Time travel, people. Starts in uh, in Scotland. Uh, I think it's around 1946 or so, right after World War II. Husband and wife are reunited. Tob uh, Tobias Menzies is her husband, who is just an incredible actor. He played Brutus on Rome. He's going to be in HBO. I believe he's back as Edmure Tully again on uh, Game of Thrones. And they are reunited. But then she gets pulled away. And she gets sucked back into 18th century Scotland. And she meets this beautiful Highlander named... Um, I don't know, I call him beautiful. Maybe I shouldn't Jamie. have said that. Jamie. Yeah, Jamie. Uh, Sam... I was butcher his name. It's hard. I don't want to like butcher 15 it. Vowels 15 vowels. Yeah, it's too much. But uh, it's it's hard. You know, he's a good-looking dude. Falls in love, and then all this stuff ensues. I won't spoil anything. And then season two starts, and th they're in France now. That's all I'm gonna say. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Definitely want to check it out. Uh, you can see from the posters uh, a lot of different costumes. Going to be in the court of King Louis the Fifteenth. So if you like history, if you like French history, check it out. If you like Scottish history, you got season one. It's a sprawling, epic romance of love. I guess Entertainment Weekly and all these there's been all these posts about the best sex scenes on television. I don't really know how to judge that but sure i guess you know there's that for him you know josh likes likes the breast there's some of those in there oh, cool. uh sasha there, there there's some male nudity as well full oh, frontal I've seen the butts. you've seen the butts so yeah. i mean there, there's something uh. for everybody to enjoy but this is a show that i recommend checking out outlander season two outlander season one go back and watch it you will not be disappointed i wrote a review on a website somebody called it why are you guys reviewing the stupid mommy porn <gasps> mommy porn Okay, Fifty Shades of Grey, I could see his mommy porn. Outlander is just excellent TV writing. The showrunner is Ronald D. Moore, Battlestar Galactica. He came in, I believe, on Star Trek Next Generation Season 3. He wrote a lot of the clean-on storylines. I'm getting a little nerdy here, but he's a good writer is what I'm trying to say. I think you it's had not, the crowd at It's not Outlander. mommy porn. No, it's not mommy porn. Okay. I, I just figured out what show I would want to spin off of. Oh. <laughs> I would like to watch the barbecue joint on House of Cards. I want to see what happens behind the scenes at that barbecue joint and in that neighborhood when they all go home with a bunch of characters there. Got it. Not, not mommy porn. You just crushed but David's I will, Outlander. We know, I will say about Outlander, my friend convinced me to watch <laughs> it by saying, oh my God, girl, the men are so hot and it's star sex. And I was like, what's star sex? And she went, <laughs> slapping. Mm -hmm. 
There's some of that in there. Watch well, guys, it. listen, we didn't get the slapping sex part from David, but we sure got it from Sasha. Uh, go out and check Outlander. I am, I'm going to start it this week, I swear. I'm going to start it. Sasha went dark. She, 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 she goes there. And yeah, okay, we got it. We got it. Uh, <laughs> guys, that's it for us here on TV Talk. Again, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. Before we go, let's go around the table. Where can they find you, Sinead Dufries? I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Sinead Dufries and at that so Sinead.com. David Griffin. At Twitter. At Wait. Twitter. At Twitter. You I'm on Twitter. Judge. At Griffin D.E. is where you can find me. And also, whenever The Flash comes back, because I'm on those stupid breaks again, I'll be in The Flash recap show. Here on Collider. Here on Collider Video. And Sasha Pearl Raver. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, at Sasha Pearl Raver. On Friday nights, ho hosting FX Movie Download. And Thursdays, co-hosting The Schmoes Know, hopefully with my man, Makuga. Guys, I'm Josh Makuga. You guys can f find us here every Monday on Collider TV Talk. And for the thousandth time, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. We love talking to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. You guys can always find me at Josh Makuga on Twitter and Instagram and my YouTube channel, The Josh Makuga Show, as well as The Arrow After Show, which we have a few more episodes to go. Hopefully, Laurel is still, spoiler alert, not going to say it. Till the next time, <laughs> put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.